Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video we learned how to download images and prepare your custom dataset, and learned how to annotate your custom images. Before starting this video please watch the previous video, so that you can understand how to do custom object detection from scratch. Now let's come to our today's topic. In this video, I'll show you how to train YOLO v3 with free GPU using our custom dataset. And this complete video will be a step-by-step -step tutorial to train a custom object detection algorithm, and I explained each cell in this notebook. Read it carefully, it will help you a lot. Without further ado let's get started. First of all, we will enable GPU in our notebook by clicking the Edit tab, then on Notebook Settings and change the Hardware Accelerator in Notebook Settings from None to GPU and we'll save it. Next, we'll check the GPU by executing the following code, you may quickly determine whether the GPU is enabled. You are seeing the GPU is enabled. In the second step we will mount Google Drive in our notebook. To mount Google Drive, run this cell. Permit the notebook by clicking connect to Google Drive. Please enter your Google Drive login information, or if you have already logged in, then choose your account. Allow access to Google Drive for the desktop of your Google account. When it gets mounted, File Explorer will show both your computer's hard drive and your Google Drive. Next, we will create a custom data directory inside Google Drive and will create some necessary files and directories inside it, files and directories which I have mentioned in this section. We will train our model to recognize pistols in this project, thus we must create an images directory inside the custom data directory and gather the images and their annotations and save them inside the images directory which is inside the custom data directory. As we have gathered our images and their annotation files in one directory, and we also converted it to a zip file and uploaded it on Google Drive, now it's time to unzip all our files that are inside the zip. To unzip files execute this cell. Before executing this cell you have to specify two paths. The first path specifies the file location that you wish to unzip. The second path specifies the location where you wish to extract the zip file. When it is unzipped successfully, the images directory should have images along with its annotation files. Like image1.jpg should have a text file image1.txt. After unzipping the files in the images directory, we have to create custom.names file in the custom data directory, labels of objects should be saved in a custom.names file, and each line in the file corresponds to an object. Let's open the custom.names file. Since we have only one object class, we have written pistol in a custom.names file, and if you are doing multiple object detection, write all the names of the objects in the same order in which order you have annotated your dataset. In the fifth step, we have to create train.txt and test.txt files by randomly splitting the annotated images into train and test sets in the ratio of 80-20 and save these two files inside the main custom data directory. Each row in the train.txt file should have the absolute path of the image which is inside the training dataset. And each row in the test.txt file should have the location of the image which is inside the test dataset. Let's see my created files. You are seeing I have provided absolute paths of each image. I'll provide a code file that will help you in generating these files. In the sixth step, we will create a backup directory in the main custom data directory. Backup is the directory where newly trained weights would be saved. In the seventh step, we will create a detector.data file in the custom data directory, which should contain information about the number of classes, the complete path of train.txt, test.txt, custom.names, and backup file, the model will use this information for training and validation of the model and for storing the weights after the training. Let's open my created detector.data file. You are seeing I have included complete paths of the mentioned files, sometimes it gives you errors when you provide short paths. In the eighth step, we will use Darknet, an open source neural network framework to train the detector. Download and build the darknet by executing this cell.
After downloading the darknet we will change the current working directory to the darknet directory and will make some changes in the make file which is inside the darknet directory. In the make file, we can change the value of some of the parameters to speed up the model training like enabling GPU, and OpenCV, 1 will enable the parameter, and 0 will disable the parameter, you can change the value of the parameters in the make file manually by opening the make file or you can do it directly by executing these commands. I'll change these values with the help of this cell. After you do some changes in the make file, you can compile a model by using compile attribute. Compiling a model is required to finalize the model and make it completely ready to use. If you did not compile the model before the training of the model, it will give you errors. In the ninth step, we will create a CFG directory inside the custom data directory. Based on the required performance we will select the YOLO v3 configuration file. We will download the YOLO v3.cfg file from the CFG directory which is inside the darknet directory, and will rename it from YOLO v3.cfg to YOLO v3 custom.cfg, and will then upload the renamed file to the CFG directory which is under the custom data directory. After the uploading, we will open the uploaded file. First of all, we will comment out the testing parameters and will uncomment the training parameters, as we are using this configuration file for training. While training the images, the weights of the neural networks are updated iteratively. We may use huge training sets which makes it resource consuming to update the weights for the entire training set in a single iteration. To use a small set of images to iteratively update the weights, the batch parameter is set. By default it is set to 64, the batch parameter is present at line number 6 in the configuration file. The maximum number of iterations for which our network should be trained is set with the max batches parameter, which is present at line number 20. The value of maximum batches changes according to the number of classes we have. To calculate the value of maximum batches we have to multiply the total number of classes with 2000. In our case we have only one class so we will change the value of maximum batches to 2000 at line number 20. Also, update the steps to 1600, and 1800, which is 80, and 90% of the maximum batches. Next, we will need to update the classes and filter parameters of the YOLO and convolutional layers. In this project since we have a single class, we will update the classes parameter in the YOLO layers to 1 at line number 610, at line number 696, and will also change the classes to 1 at line number 783. Similarly, we will need to update the filter's parameter, which is based on the class's count. To calculate the value of the filter, add 5 to the number of classes you have and then multiply it by 3. For a single class, we will change the filter parameter to 18 at line number 603, at line number 689, and we'll also change it to 18 at line number 776, and we'll save the changes. Now, to train our object detector we can use the existing pre-trained weights, which have already some knowledge of object detection because it has already been trained on huge data sets. We can download the pre-trained weights to the root directory by clicking the link here or we can download it by executing the following cell. I'll download it with the help of this command, and it will be downloaded to the root directory. With all the required files and annotated images we can start our training. Before starting the training please ensure that you have done all the changes which I have mentioned in the notebook. In the following cell, we have to mention to the darknet detector that we are doing training and will specify the path of the detector.data file, path of the configuration file, and weights file. After specifying all the files let's start training. We can continue training until the loss reaches a certain threshold. By default, weights for the custom detector are saved for every 100 iterations until 1000 iterations, and then continue to save for every 10,000 iterations. If during training you see NAN values for the average loss field, then training goes wrong, but if NAN is in some other lines, then training goes well. The training will take a long time depending on the processing power and images. I hope you learned how to train a custom object detector, and you are seeing that our model is training without giving any errors. 
and I have already trained my model for up to 2000 epics, as I have already trained my model before so I'll stop the training. Next, I have included another section mentioned with the tag continue training from where you left, sometimes due to some reason your model training gets stopped, and then you try to start it from scratch. There is no need to start the training from scratch, during the training the weights are saved in our defined backup directory. Provide the path of that previously trained weights in the place of initial weights, and start training. It will start from that previous trained position. As we have executed our cell when it starts training you will see that the model is training from that previously trained position. I have passed the previously trained weights which are trained up to 1000 epics. When the detector loaded the weights and starts training, you will see that it will start training from 1001. As you learned, we can start the training back from a previously trained position, so I'll stop the training. At last, I will calculate the mean average precision of my trained weights by running this cell. My last model is trained up to 2000 epochs. It will take a little bit of time to calculate the results, so let's wait for a few seconds. After calculating the mean average precision of my model you can see the results on the screen. As we have trained the model to detect only one object, that's why it is showing the result of only one class, you can see that the class ID is equal to 0, the name equal to the pistol, and the average precision of the pistol class is equal to 81.45% which is quite good. You can see the precision, recall, and F1 score of the trained weights, and also you can see the intersection over union, and the other values. When you are done with training, download the last train saved weights, which will be present in your backup directory, I'll download the weights which are trained for up to 2000 epochs, and will also download the configuration file, which is present in the CFG directory under the main custom data directory. So that's all from this video, in the next video, we will use these downloaded weight and configuration files to detect pistols using OpenCV and NumPy. Thanks for watching till the end. Bye.